Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. This video is about how to get your radio talking to N1MM and some of the more advanced screens and settings that you can do on it. Um, I was going to hold this and then tack a bunch of real-time uh, contacts on the end of it, but I think I'll save that for a second video. Anyway, hope you like it. All right, so let's start out by taking a look at how you would configure your radio to talk to N1MM and vice versa. I'm going to config and I'm going to go to config ports, modes, controls, win key, etc. So it's fairly simple. What you're going to do is um, if, if you've never done cat control before, and this is your first time, you're going to have to read the manual a little bit on your radio to figure out, uh, first off, what the baud rate is by default. And if you're an old hand at this, you know, it's fairly simple just to get this all configured. What you really need to make sure you know is what COM port you're using. And in my case, uh, my USB to serial adapter is COM12. And I'm going to my FTDX3000. So I'm just going to select COM12 from the pull down here. Uh, yours may be COM3, COM4, COM6, I don't know. Uh, you're just going to have to look at the device manager and kind of figure that one out. Um, now my radio is an FTDX3000, so I'll select that. I'm going to go over here to set. And this is where I can set my baud rate, my parity, data bits and stop bits. This is where you got to kind of read your manual. I've made changes on my radio and my radio is actually running 38400 baud for the uh, cat control system with uh, 8, none, and 1. I'm sure that sounds familiar. Uh, I actually use uh, push to talk for digital mode, so I have these checked. You don't need to check those if all you want to do is just control the radio's uh, uh, you know, frequency and mode as well as be able to change the frequency and mode from the radio and have the program recognize it. So let's demonstrate that. Once I get this set up, as for, by the way, the DTR and the RTS, that's going to be a variable sort of thing. So, But for right now, we're just going to leave this just as it is. I'm going to go ahead and select OK, and it's going to verify that everything's pretty much working. And when I'm done, I look up here, and I see that I am set to 14250 USB. I'm going to reach over to the knob on the 3000, and I'm going to turn it. And look at that. My frequency is changing. I'm going to suck in here to 13 to. Uh, uh, 225 and it holds there right at, uh, excuse me, 14225 and it holds there right at 14225. All right, so I've got it configured. Let me swing it back up to what I like to call my center, usually where I like to start out at and start my tuning at is 14250. And I'll just leave it there. So the cool part of this also is if I want to change my frequency from here, I can just go uh, 14, 2, 2, 0, and it will change it here, and it will also change it on my radio. Let me show you. I actually have a program running that I can show you uh, the Yesu radio right here. As I turn the knob, you can see that it's moving here, and it's also moving down here. It's kind of faint, but you can see it. Um, and it works really well. Now, in order to show you the real cool part about that, I'm going to have to show you the different windows that I use inside of N1MM. I had a question from somebody uh, when I was talking about doing these videos and they asked me to show them how to determine what their COM port is and that's fairly simple. In Windows 10 we're going to use the right mouse button and we're going to click on the start uh, button. We're going to go up to the device manager. 
We're going to pull up the device manager and let me move it a little bit more center screen here. And what you're going to see is you're going to see ports COM and LPT. We're going to look in here and in here are all the COM ports for uh, uh, your uh, uh, computer. And you just have to pick out which one of these COM ports goes to your radio. In a lot of cases, the Silicon Labs uh, ports, you'll have two of them. Only one of them will be going to the radio. Or if you've got a USB serial port, uh, that tends to be the one that's going to the radio. So um, anyway, this gives you a starting point if you can figure out which one of your COM ports. And a lot of times, you know what? Uh, you'll go in here, and if you're using just a USB to serial adapter, it'll only have one COM port. It'll be COM3 or COM4. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier. Anyway, um, so with that, let's keep going. All right. Well, let's talk about the windows I like to use in N1MM. I've showed you pretty much how to get it connected up to your uh, uh, your computer hooked up to your radio here inside N1MM. And N1MM is going to want to be the big dog here. So if you're trying to control anything else um, with COM ports, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Uh, that's why uh, I run digital and I also run all of my uh, uh, other tools through N1MM. And I can show you how to do that. And there's also ways that you can share COM ports as well, uh, split them. Uh, but that has to do with third-party software and is way beyond the scope of something I can easily show on a video. So uh, we're going to leave that to your imagination and your determination to figure out how to get that done. Um, anyway, I think I left you guys off with uh, the concept of wanting to also look at, let's see, I think I had a summary, score summary. I like to have the score summary window up when I'm operating because it shows me the band I'm working on. It shows how many QSOs I've got, what my uh, bonuses are, and everything else. Uh, but there are a lot more things that I actually like to look at. Let's just restore my normal windows. There we go. You see over here on the left? On the left here is the band map. And right now it's over right on the 14250 where I left it. Of course, this shows info about my operating. Now I haven't, I, this contest was from about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks. So it's been greater than 24 hours since I made my last QSO. But this tracks how well I'm doing in an hour period and gives me goals to hit as I work. Uh, up here, uh, if I was running uh, a Telnet window and running what we call assisted or using a spotting network, this would list all the multis and untalked to call signs that my software knows about that might be good QSOs for me to hit. This is the uh, log check. Um, N1F, uh, N1MM actually has a really cool feature. What that feature is, is you can download and install a check file from N1MM, and you should do that before every contest. You can also download and install a country file, and those get updated all the time uh, with info that's exchanged uh, with scores that are turned in. What that allows to have happen is if I type in a call sign, let's type in uh, AB6ET, and it's going to have a question mark next to it here, okay? And it says, you know, there's other T's there, but I don't like the B. Now, the question mark doesn't mean it's not a valid call. I happen to know this is a valid call. This is a friend of mine. Uh, but he doesn't do much contesting, and he very rarely turns in a contest log. So contesting uh, uh, sites don't know about him, so they don't really know he exists. Now, question mark, is that any reason not to uh, take a QSO? No, not at all. But you may want to double check if you're at all unsure that that was the right uh, call sign. Let's put in one that I know, well, I know, we'll see, NQ6X. 
See the check mark? I know this guy. And I know for a fact that he's in those databases, okay? So I knew that I'd have a check mark next to that saying that, yeah, that's a call sign that does contest. You're probably talking, we verify, we've heard him on the air. So that's pretty cool. You also see up here, it gives some additional options that I can use for different things. So let's say I do NQ6. It's gonna say, okay, if it's an N or an X, Probably a good call sign. We've heard it before, right? So those are all kind of cool little tools that you can do with your log check. Now, let's say that I start off with him and I just can't make the cue. So it's a pile up and I'm not breaking through. Well, if I start tuning off, let's say to go to the next, oh, look what happens in the band map. First off, it shows that I tuned off right here and that's where I'm at. But it remembers this. It doesn't spot it publicly. It just remembers that I put that in there. And since I have not entered it as a QSO, it remembers its position. Okay? Really cool. And with everything linked on the radio and the program, I can go up here and just click on it. And guess what? It's going to tune my radio right back. And then I can click here. It's going to put all the other information I had partially filled in. All right, so the band map's really cool. And when you're running spotting, it will put all of the call signs that are picked up from the spotting network in here. So you can basically click on them. And there's also some tricks where you can do uh, control keys to step through each one of them, either going up in frequency or down in frequency. There's also ways that you can look at multis too. More on that when, uh, when we actually show me doing a contest with the software. I like the countries or other multis, and basically there weren't any multipliers really with this concept test, so this is blank. But I can put a window here for, uh, let's see, this is set for countries or counties. This is set for counties. Uh, let's say that I want to look at something else. Uh, let's look at the multipliers. Let's say the multipliers are sections or states. This would list all the sections and states. So, again, these are different windows that are very useful in a contest because this will show you what sections and states that you've gotten. Okay, this would be the sections and states one would be the one that you'd be using for field day. Um, and uh, you know what? That just about covers the extra windows that I like. Now, the next step is to actually show this thing in action in a contest. So hopefully I'll have the opportunity to do that in a couple days. For now, I'm going to step away and put this video in the can and hold it for an edit after we get some real QSOs. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to try to make some contacts with this setup a little bit later today and try to get them caught on uh, camera so we're able to show them to you. Um, hey, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please go down below, make some comments, ask some questions, and please subscribe. Anyway, for now, 73, this is Stu, AG6AG. Hope to hear you on the air.